Hello and welcome back to A-Level Biology Help. Today I'm going to take you through the required practical exam questions. So you have your required practicals which you do in your lessons but then in the written paper, so your regular exams, they can sometimes ask you questions relating to the required practicals. So today I'm going to go through what could they ask you. So here is the list of the 12 required practicals and um, the first six ones are the ones that you do in AS. I'm not going to read them all out because I'm assuming you can all read so feel free to pause the video if you want to. And these are the six that you do in A2, so year 13. So what can they ask you in the written exam? So they can ask you questions set in a practical context where the question centres on the science, not the practical work. So a question could be like some students carried out this experiment about the rate of enzyme activity. So it is set in a practical context, but, but they ask you questions based on the results. So wanting you to apply your knowledge of enzymes to the question. So, for example, it could say, why does the rate of enzyme activity increase as temperature increases, for example. So it doesn't directly relate to the actual first required practical, which you will have seen in the, earlier in the video. They could also ask you questions that require specific aspects of practical procedure to be understood in order to answer a question about the underlying science, for example, sterile technique, because sterile technique is something that you use so it is an aspect that you use in the sixth required practical, I think. So you need to have a good understanding of the key aspects of the practical procedures so that you can then apply that knowledge to the underlying science. So in the case of sterile technique, you might use alcohol. So you could say how alcohol kills bacteria, for example. So you would say it dissolves the phospholipid bilayer and therefore kills the bacteria, for example. Also, this is more specific for the procedures, so questions directly on the required practical procedures. For example, the math skills that you use in the practicals to analyse your data. These are just a few examples, but these math skills can include calculating mitotic index, so that's in the second required practical, calculating rate from enzyme controlled reaction graphs, also interpreting calibration curves, which you will use in the um, blood glucose concentration practical, I think, and the osmosis practical as well. So you need to be, become confident with your math skills that you use in the practicals to be competent in your written exam. Right, so now I'm going to go through a few examples of the um, practical exam questions. So I think I used this question in my video about proteins and enzymes. So if you haven't watched that video, you can click the link in the corner. So this graph comes from the experiments of a few students investigating how um, temperature affects enzyme activity. So if I get my pen tool out, this straight line here represents the how the concentration of product in the mixture changes over time at 25 degrees Celsius. And this one here is at 37 degrees Celsius. And as you can see there, they are very different shapes. So the first part of this question asks you to calculate the rate of reaction at 25 degrees Celsius. So this corresponds with the point I made about using specific parts of the procedure. So, for example, math skills. I went over how you calculate rates from a graph in my how to interpret graphs and tables video. So you can check that out if you like, but I'm going to go through it again. So as it is asking you to calculate the rate of 25 degrees, we need to look at this straight line here. And calculating rate from a straight line is pretty easy because you just calculate the gradient. And the gradient is the change in the y-axis over the change in x-axis. So now we need to figure 
what the change in y and the change in x is. So as you can see, the change in y, so this axis here is 10 because the concentration of product goes from 0 to 10 over the experiment. And the change in the x axis is 240. So we do 10 divided by 240, which equals 0 0.0416. Now you might be tempted to just use 0.0416 as your answer, however the, the examiner prefers it if you use less decimal places as it makes your answer look more concise and less complicated. So a general rule of thumb is to use two decimal places. So in my answer I've written 0.04 as that is 0.0416 to two decimal places. And I have worked out the units from the graph, so grams per decimeter cube per second, as if I get my pen tool out here. The units for the concentration of product is grams per decimeter cubed, and the units for time are seconds. And as we are dividing the change in y over the change in x to get our rate of reaction, this is how we write the units. So grams per decimeter cubed per second. If we were dividing the x by the y axis, it would be 0.04 seconds per gram per decimeter cubed, which would be wrong. So our units are grams per decimeter cubed per second. 0.04, we have put this, and then grams per decimeter cubed per second. So we would get all two marks for the question. Notice also how another um, answer that you could put is 2.5. So you're probably wondering, well, how did they get this? Well, if you're confused about how they got this, you need to look at a second marking point, which says grams per decimeter cube per minute. So what you might have done here is converted the seconds that they use in the questions to minutes. So if your answer for your rate per second is 0.04, you need to change that to minutes. So there is 60 seconds in one minute, so you need to multiply 0.04 by 60 to get your answer. Answer of approximately 2.5 grams per decimeter cube per minute. But it doesn't matter which answer you put here because um, there is a slash here. So you can put either one to get the marks. Right, so we'll move on to another question. This question is relating to, directly relating to the osmosis practical. So they are following the exact procedure that you use in the required practical. Sometimes it's a bit different, but relating to the skills that you've learned in the practical. But it, in this case, it is carrying out the exact procedure that you use. So a group of students carried out an investigation to find the water potential of potato tissue. The students were each given a potato and a 50 centimetre cubed of a one mole per decimetre cubed solution of sucrose. They used a one mole per decimetre cubed solution of sucrose to make a series of different concentrations. They cut and weighed discs of potato tissue and left them in the sucrose solutions for a set time. They then removed the discs of potato tissue and reweighed them. The table below shows how one student presented his processed results. So here we have our data table. So the concentration of sucrose solution in mole per decimeter cube here, and here the percentage change in mass of potato tissue. So the first part of the question asks you, explain why the data in the table above are described as processed results. So this is a question referring to the actual practical procedure directly, but also it is um, asking you about your application of mathematical knowledge. So explain why the data in the table above are described as processed results. Well, the term process means that you have to do something to the results. So a calculation. And as you can see, the data here is percentage change. So they must have um, done a calculation to get this from their raw data. 
So the calculation of percentage change means that re the results are processed. So this is what I've written. Calculations are made from the raw data. The raw data would be the change in mass and they have processed these results to get the percentage change. So if we look at the mark scheme, it says calculations are made on raw data, which we wrote, so we would get the mark for this question. Or you could put the raw data would have recorded initial and final masses. So you can write in a bit more detail, but I would just put calculations are made from raw data. So this is another question directly relating to the practical procedure, and it is another maths question. So describe how you would use a one mole per decimeter cube solution of sucrose to produce 30 centimeter cubed of a 0.15 mole per decimeter cubed solution of sucrose. So this mathematical skill we will might have to use in the blood glucose concentration practical as well, so it links with that. So these types of questions are quite tricky, but we will um, go through them now. So the first thing that you need to calculate is what we call a dilution factor. A dilution factor is a number that tells you the magnitude by which something has been diluted. To do this, we need to um, divide the two concentrations by each other. So the larger concentration by the lower one. So we divide one by 0.15. So our dilution factor is approximately 6.6. The next step is to calculate how much sucrose solution we need to produce this dilution. To do this, we divide the um, volume of sucrose solution we have at the start by our dilution factor. And this is approximately 4.5 centimeter cube of sucrose. Now I have rounded to 4.5 as the maximum number of significant figures used in the question is 2. And the final step is to make this up to 30 using water. So to do this, we just take away 4.5 from 30. So 30 minus 4.5 equals 30, not 35, 25.5 centimetre cubed of water. Now the question asks us, describe so you need to put this into writing to get a mark so i've written add 4.5 centimeter cubed sucrose solution to 25.5 centimeter cubed of water so the mark scheme says pr pretty much what i've written exactly so i'd not add 4.5 centimeter cubed of one mole per decimeter cube solution you don't need to write this as it is in brackets the 25.5 centimetre cube distilled water. Again, you don't need to write distilled as it is in brackets. Also here it says, if incorrect, allow one mark for solution to water in a proportion of 0.15 to 0.85. So there are many different ways of figuring out this answer, but I think the way that I did it is quite a simple way, or you can use ratios if you like. So I think this is the last question that we will go through. So this is relating to using the um, knowledge of the practical procedure to apply your knowledge of science. So it says, explain the change in mass of potato tissue in a 0.4 mole per decimeter cubed solution of sucrose. So 0.4, we will look here. So the change is minus 3.8. So the percentage change is negative, suggesting that the potato tissue has lost mass. So if we put this into the context of osmosis, this will suggest that water has moved out of the potato tissue to cause the loss in mass. And as we know from the um, transport across cell membranes, particularly osmosis section of the cells unit, we know that water moves from a high water potential to a low water potential. So this suggests that the um, water potential of the sucrose solution is lower than that of the potato. So water has moved out from the potato by osmosis. So this is what I've written. 
The water potential of the solution is less than that of the potato, so water is lost from the potato tissue by osmosis. It is really crucial that you write by osmosis as you risk losing a mark if you don't specifically refer to osmosis. So if we look at the mark scheme, mark point one said the water potential of solution is less than, or you can write more negative than, that of the potato tissue. So we wrote this so we'll get a mark. It allows this symbol, so this is a symbol for water potential, as equivalent to water potential. So you can use a symbol instead to get a mark. And then the second marking point says tissue loses water by osmosis or water moves out of the tissue by osmosis. So again, it's crucial that you refer to osmosis in your answer. So we would get all two marks. So actually, this is the final question. Describe how you would use students' results in the table above to find the water potential of the potato tissue. So this refers to my point about specific um, skills in the required practical. So in the required practical, you are required to write a calibration curve. So this question is inferring that you write about how you um, draw and interpret a calibration curve. So this is what I've written. So first you would plot a graph with a concentration of sucrose solution on the x-axis and the percentage change in mass of potato tissue on the y-axis. So as you can see, we are describing every step in how we would find the water potential. You would then find the point where the curve crosses the x-axis. So when this implies when the percentage change is zero, and then you would use another resource to find the water potential of the sucrose solution and you would use another resource as you can't infer the actual water potential of the tissue from your results. So if we look at the mark scheme, mark point one says plot a graph with concentration on the x-axis and percentage change in mass on the y-axis. So you don't need as much detail as what I've written, but you need to get the key points of plotting the graph with the correct axis to get the mark. Second marking point, Find concentration where the curve crosses the x-axis or where the percentage change is zero. So this implies when the um, solution is isotonic. Mark point three, so you use another resource to find the water potential of sucrose concentration. So we will get all three marks for this question. Also it says here where the curve crosses the x-axis. But you don't need to write this because it is in brackets. Right, that is all I want to say for this video. If you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comments and I will see you in my next video.